on this episode of the Roundtable Podcast. We have just great conversation, Danny. Yeah. AG graduates, people growing up, talking about college. College transition. Across, yep, across the board. Trevon. Yeah, just great episode. Uh, talked about coaching as well. Um, super cool. I think uh, hear a cool story on that. Super uh, interesting for me. Mm-hmm. I'm super excited to become uh, a coach. I'm going to coach some dogs, and all my linebackers are going to wear neck rolls. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to know. Yeah. Let's go to the episode. <laughs> Roundtable Podcast, I'm your boy Corey G, that is Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak, brought to you by MaxSuperMuscle.com, <laughs> Sam Adams, and who else? Manscaped. <laughs> ah, That's Danny, great. Danny's been lawn mowing some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It works. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, uh, what's the promo code, Danny? Promo code, or code is Small Arms with a Z. Okay. That's get right. Twenty percent off and free shipping. Yeah, mm. check it out. Hey, I mean lawn mow it. That's Danny's right. Danny's lawn mow it. Dude, you gotta get bro. in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Whoa. Carefree. Yeah. Yeah. Get in there. Carefree, carefree taint mowing. That's right. Waterproof. It's <laughs> waterproof. You can't be cut your stuff up. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's going on today, fellas? What do you say, Cole? I mean, I don't know. There's a lot going on. Yeah? Yeah. Give me one. <laughs> give me <laughs> Yeah, give me one. Give me one of them. Like, I mean, obviously, like, we don't really know what we're talking about. I was just thinking yeah. of potential things to talk about. And I just think, like, we all just had a lot of, a lot of shit that we've been working on. Yeah, that's you true. You know, from the supplements, the busy diet. Yeah, you know, the busy all, diet. All good. those mommies out there. Then Lots of mommies. Got the house stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my kid's graduating. Yeah, Trey's getting a haircut. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Trey found is, part. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, small arms is just just trying to survive. Yeah. Survive. <laughs> so the uh, it is kind of an interesting. Um, this week has been really super kind of crazy because I'm trying to get ready for AG's graduation party coming up in a couple weeks mm-hmm. and just graduation in general and just like that shift of you know a person that you created with your wife is now grown to the point where literally just turned 18. So you know, I mean, he could be he's eligible for the draft. He could go be on his own. That's I wild. mean, it, eligible for the military draft. Yeah. I mean, you know, I wish it was that draft, That's right? Yeah, that too. What's the age limit on that again? I think it's 18. So, oh, like, ha yeah, yeah, 30, yeah. 35, I think. Oh, okay. So, I mean, that's all, like, obviously that hasn't happened, happened in a long time, but that's the first thing I remember that they, like, say, hey, you got to register for this. And you're like, oh, that's just fucking real now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but anyway, I think it's one of those things where it's just weird because – it goes like that. You obviously have a young child. You guys don't yet, but it's like happens so quick, man. It's wild. And people tell you that when you're in it, like where you're at now Mm -hmm. and you think, ah, or then, people, or like growing up, like I always say, like growing up, people like when you go to like family things and yep. you see someone, they're like, oh, you've grown up so much or something like that, or you're so big now, yep. and like it doesn't seem like that long to you. But mm. and then so like now though, so I go see like my little cousins, and my one of my little cousins is taller than me now. Yeah, and I remember uh, holding him as a baby, like in the hospital. So it's crazy, so right? Like, so I'm like, what the fuck? fuck? <laughs> like you know, something like, clicked to me then, like when people will tell you, like, oh, you grew up so fast, like then I was you like, know, oh, so shit, fucking like, wild is like Dyson whenever he comes in here to help us out with the boom cast. Yeah, he was like literally like in second or third grade whenever I was in high school. Mm-hmm. So now he's like in college, like trying to help out. So that's pretty yeah, wild too. That is. Well, and I think that when you're a little kid, the day feels this long, right? Yeah. True. And it takes forever. It feels like to get through school. But I think we all can agree. As soon as you get out of school, shit flies. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know what I mean? And so I think that that's uh, one of the things that's kind of wild to me. But I was telling this to Boom yesterday, like having grown conversations with AG as they're starting to, those are happening more often. I actually enjoy that because I think I'm getting the chance to like kind of relay information that wasn't relayed to me. And I've been able to do that along, but as we continue to like execute our daily strategies of how we operate, the kids are watching the whole time. You can tell them whatever, but at the end of the day, they're going to do what they see. And then hopefully you can match that up when they're old enough to actually understand it, which is starting to happen more and more. Right. So I'm kind of really looking forward to that kind of next part of life of, you know, hey, you're not dealing with, AG didn't really have a lot of this anyway, but you know, you got just the high school stuff that's social drama and clicks and all that stuff that everybody goes through. And then when you get into this next where it's like, what do you really want to do with your life? Mm-hmm. What's next? That To me, that's the fun part. Cause that's it's, when I was like, yeah, it's way different. I struggled for a very short period of time, but then once I knew it's been a wrap ever since. So it's, it's an interesting time frame. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to it though. 
It's also kind of sad. It's it's a little bit of both. You know what I mean? It's a weird. Yeah. Uh, it's been a weird emotional week, really, for Rachel. Were, were you emotional on senior night I, while I was announcing? I wasn't actually. Surprisingly, I'm not sure why. I think Don said it kind of best today. He said, "When all of this is happening, there's so much going on, especially because he plays a sport. You know, at the end yeah. of his senior year, so graduation, the sport being at the end, and then graduate. It's like it's." You want to soak it up, but there's so many things to do. It's almost like you can't. It's like your wedding. <laughs> I would say it's very similar to that, Danny. Mm-hmm. Figure It feels that way. Like you want to just like enjoy it. You really, and then I had some other, it's just like, there's so much going on. It's almost like it's just clicking and you, you're not wishing it to be over, but it's like a lot. And so I don't know. It's, it, I've been trying to soak it up, but it's, it's been difficult because there's so much stuff, but either way, it's, it's interesting. How, transition. Is, how is he feeling right now? Do you think, or like, what's your read on him? Uh, my read is that he's got similar thoughts. It's like, wait, I'm 18. Oh, Mm -hmm. it's cool. I can like get a tattoo and shit, but also like, do I have to start paying bills? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And I think we all have that thought, right? When that transition, it's like, oh shit, I'm about to be for real an adult now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think, uh, I, I do like the dialogue of already, you know, ideas, things, things he can do. I think, you know, we talked about he's going to start teaching some pitching lessons to some youth kids. Like, he's got ways to make money already just by certain things, but understanding that that's a possibility, partly because of our setup. We already got a mound. We are, there's a lot that's already second generation there. It's That's that's a fact. Yeah. But AG, like his experience, like helped me with the pre-workout this last time and some of the marketing stuff that he's in the finance. Like, he just, he, he's got some good understandings of stuff already. So that would be interesting. Mm-hmm. But like to think like, Alex, through four no hitters, is not going to play college baseball, but every little kid, little leaguer, knows him as the high school pitcher. He 100% tomorrow could have a, a a job teaching pitching lessons, making more in a half hour than I made as an hour as a personal trainer, 20 mm-hmm. years previous to this. Mm-hmm. It's wild. And like those kids so young, like oh, they'll ride with them until they're for in high sure. School. So we're gonna have like a legitimate conversation after the season's over, which in the next couple of weeks of the Alex G uh, youth pitching club. Yeah. <laughs> That's what That's I know. Awesome. It's going to be sweet. Right. Yeah, so we're going to, you know, we're going to set it up and that could be part of his summer job. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the move. And then he's going to Newark. so easy. You, he knows how to break down film, all that stuff. You think he's like going to like go all the way through school? I don't know. That's a funny question. I hope he doesn't uh, listen to this, but I, I <laughs> not sure. Well, because he, I mean, <laughs> because he definitely walks on to the financial like trading stuff. Like I'm just yeah. like thinking like, if he just wanted like to trade himself, oh and do yeah, this like he could have a whole bunch of business things going on that all kind of well, work together. Here's the other thing that's funny is like, <laughs> I remember I got my little like three racks or whatever for my graduation, and I spent it chasing some girl in Mississippi. It's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Ag goes, I was in love. It didn't yeah. work. She was like, whatever. Ag's like, yeah, I'm gonna put it in the market. <laughs> I'm gonna trade with it. Whatever I get, it, you know, whatever twenties I get or whatever. Yeah. I'm so it's like funny just even that. That like mentality, I was like, "Oh, get me a plane ticket. I'm in love. I'm about to." I was a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, if you line up your three kids, like, what are you putting your money on, or who are you putting your money on to be in college for all four years? I'm just curious. Like, well, it's interesting because Mad's already uh, talked about maybe doing a trade, like almost like hair or really? so, or cosmetology. Yeah, yeah. So, which would be like a one or two year, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and then AG. It could go either way. Like, I think he could still probably be an entrepreneur, but go through four years because of just the experience. Yeah. And because of the life that we have, he could do that. Right. Yeah. The, um, and in though might end up being the one that makes it a four years because of sports potentially. So, you know what I mean? So there's, it's a wild card, but also <laughs> I think that here's what I'll say out of all this work that I put in and all these aspirations, I just want my kids to do or try what they want to do. I don't really care what it is. Mm-hmm. If AG came to me tomorrow <clears throat> and said, dad, I'm going to be a trader and I'm going to do YouTube content and I'm going to fucking blow it up. I'd believe him. Why wouldn't I? I'm a fucking guy who lifts weights and does content yeah. my whole life. You know what I mean? So, and if Madeline <laughs> wants to fucking have a, a studio and, and be a cosmetologist, great. We'll put like, to me, it's like, I want them to get a chance to do what they like. Cause no one previous to me, has done that. So my whole goal was yes, make amount of money, do these things. But the reality was when they get of age, can they get a chance 
to do something they like to do, not something they, they'll have to do things they have to do. Don't get me wrong. But th- at the point, like to where they can head down the path of shit, they actually enjoy well, That's, also, that right there is like a huge. Yeah. Also in like, you got to think like all of us are to the point now where like, you know, when Danny's kid get older, like your kids, like if they do decide, like if Mad goes into hair, we, you, you can help them by basically saying like, okay, like now maybe if you learn this now, if you want to make a product, we are yes. like that. That's how it works. That's what I'm like saying. We can think of like multiple ways to monetize yes. what they want to do. Well, and by the way, oh, we can hit up Dylan and we can create a brand and we know yeah, how to do like it, a website. That's what I'm saying. Like, so generation two, if they have some drive and they're interested in something, everything gets sped up like that. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and so that's like one of those things that's going to be interesting to see. But yeah. also, just like I've told AG multiple times, you're fucking shithead. I'm not helping you out. So yeah, just do just, you know, go work at something. But if you like, I think this is the thing when you like what you do. The work is e- is quote unquote easier to work harder at it, and I think a lot of people you naturally almost work harder at it. Yes, it's instinctive. It's instinctive, and I think because a lot of people don't head towards that instinctive route because they're scared or whatever the thing is that that's not. So when people say the work hard part, I've seen AG work hard at stuff like and spend hours on things that I was like, he reading stock charts and all these things that I would never <clears throat> fucking do, but it's because he's into it. Yeah, so it makes sense. It's a, so it's it's an interesting dynamic um, of what will be happening with yeah. all my kids, basically. So, you guys will all go through it. So, like, being a parent, like, amongst all the baseball and sports families and stuff mm-hmm. like that, do you – because, like, when I was going through Pickerington or whatever, it was, like, never really – that was never even discussed. Like, What's that? Like, go try what you want to do or what you yeah. actually are gravitated towards. Like, it was just, like, the the next thing was going. You coach. know, it was my... It was he, just, like, an unspoken agreement. You know, you know what's what I mean? funny is, Danny, is it was my only thought. <clears throat> I just I just knew everyone around me hated what they did. It was yeah. so obvious. Now, Randy is an exception. He says he likes being a, he liked being a coal miner. But Randy's just kind of a happy-go-lucky guy anyway. He's my stepdad, dog. he's a dog, yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's like... But the reality is, if he could have chose... Like, I'm still going to come lift weights tomorrow. Yeah. Like, he would, I think now he said, man, he goes, I just asked him the other day, he's been retired for like five years. He like sleeps till like 10. I'm like, Randy, like, dude, he goes, he's so funny. Like, I worked a million hours when I work. When I don't work, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> it's like, he's like, I'm staying up till four, I'm watching TV. Like, he totally flipped <laughs> yeah, his whole yeah. schedule, but I'm happy for him. So, but at the end of the day, like, I think if, that was my main focus and it's still my main focus because now that I understand more integration, I think not balance that if you can integrate things you like to do with your family and your lifestyle, I think that's the best way to get close to maybe like a perfect day in a way. So do you see that though? Like with the other parents though, is it like, do you feel like they kind of push them towards the traditional college route or do you I think people are more open-minded yeah. now than ever. Um, I would Experience. say like, I've heard, I don't know. I still, here's what I still see. And I saw this with myself and, um, Trey, you might be able to identify with this. It's like, cause you guys both finished school. So is when you're not going to finish school or you're like saying you're, you're done with school or you want, I'm in a community college, just the people's eye, the way they look at you, like, like you're less than or something. And I don't know why it's like that. But even people that they're not even trying to, I know, (laughs) but it's just really what they think. And I don't even know if it's people that disliked me, but they were like, Oh, like almost like they're saying, yeah, he's not going to be successful. And I don't even want like, but I'm telling you, I could see it and I felt it. And so I think it was good for me to, to feel that, but I don't know if you experienced that. Like that's probably how I would say like everybody feels that goes to college and then, and then it's like a dropout. Yeah. Everyone has eyes on them. Like whether it's like, it may not even be like a friend or like a roommate or something, but it could just be like the fucking professor or like the advisor when you go Mm. in and tell them you want to drop out. Like it could be something as like loser and they're making 60. Yeah. It's it's (laughs) a whole whole game. Like Like, honestly, that's the business by the way. They're in a business. They don't even understand it. Yeah. Like, uh, 
Yeah. So, all right, totally. <laughs> so whenever I was at Ohio State yeah. and shit like that, we were going through stuff. The only there was like only like two or three professors that I would look at and be like, okay, I actually like can buy into what you're saying. The other ones are going. To, they're they're teaching about what they're doing because they're trying to get like a better job, basically. Yep. Like in that, it never made sense. Like they're like in a fucking race. But what I find interesting is is I went to school, but I get more excited talking to people about if they don't go to school. Yeah. Like I'm like now trying to basically because in my mind I'm thinking. Yeah, I did finish my degree, but like I was like in business more like if you'd ask me like the the business side, like the school was a secondary. Like yeah. I was I was fucking skipping classes if I had to. Like I For was sure. you know trying to get my work done first. So like um now like whenever kids are like, "Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go to school." I instantly like light up and be like, "All right, what are you like trying to do now?" And like I try to encourage that Here's actually. the other thing Cole too is where you can give good advice is you went through school but you did twice the amount of effort like working with us on top of it. You yeah. know what it takes if you didn't go to school because you were living both worlds. 100%. And a lot of people don't really do that. Some yeah. people do. There's a lot of like people that are working their way through school, but it's like you were working on your craft and working your way through school. It, it was, it was, interesting. but also like my situation is very unique in the fact that probably most people won't have the same setup. Mm. And the fact that like my parents were like, basically so low income i got the max amount of financial yeah. aid so basically it almost felt like ohio state was paying me to go to school with the shit yeah and then actually working and getting like income to pay for everything like i felt like it was a situation i couldn't pass up yeah but if my situation was different where i was like taking out major loans if you were in debt you wouldn't have went huh or if finished. i was crazy in debt yeah because i'm like constantly thinking like the only way i'm getting out of this entire situation is if i'm not fucking straddled with debt basically yep. like that's i just knew that's how it was going to be period it's a business so, you made a business decision they're paying me for free to go to college a, why would i say no to literally it? exactly what i thought and i remember like my parents and people around me wanted me to go play school and i, I just kept there did you say play or, school? Or, or, or play football they wanted me to play football in yeah. school and i'm like <laughs> I, can't, I can't fucking justify paying 60 no. grand like out of pocket a year like there's no way somebody said the other day that d3 is the highest level pay for play it is a hundred percent facts. Yeah. I mean, because most, you know, cause if you're middle income or even higher income, you're, I mean, unless you're completely have no money, you're paying 50 yeah. at least, but I, I can understand for the love of the sport. I mean, I would have been in that, that lower income. So if some, if Dennis would have came to me and asked me to play basketball, I'd be play, I would have been playing in medicine. I wanted to play college dude, sports so fucking dude, we, bad. Like, <laughs> I was getting the max amount of yeah. the max amount. They're like basically, you get everything we offer. The state yeah. will give you whatever. Uh, the government will give you whatever. And it was still crazy, like yeah. crazy. I would have came out of like school with a hundred k. Well, and think that. about this, like the move you're making right now, like in that crib and stuff, like you would have had to evaluate because you'd have this other whole payment that you don't have now. Dude, I would have had to evaluate I think what it, apartment I was living in. Yeah. You know? I think it, yeah, it's interesting. So yeah, so Trey, you, like in your, you said family event, when you would go to a family event and people know you're not at school anymore and because you had, you know, track, track money too, like, do you feel like people were like looking down on you even if they weren't trying or did you not, how, how did that feel for you? Um. Yeah, I feel like people, like, def like I definitely, like, you definitely like, get, like, the feeling that, like, people do, but, like, there's not, like, anything, like, specific that yeah. comes to mind, but you definitely, like, you can, like, feel, like, the, the undertone. Yeah, you can, like, feel, like, the undertone and, like, feel the yeah. energy from, like, certain people and just, like, the tone and how they talk and, like, how they're asking, like, if what they're asking, what you're doing then and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. Has sure. it shifted, though, now at this point because it's been so long? I don't talk to any of those people, so yeah, I don't know. There you go. Next question. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Trey's the hatchet man. <laughs> That's another way to get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, Danny, so you've you've talked about it multiple times because you went through the traditional experience, had some debt, not crazy amount of debt, but like uh, when you, would you have been able to back then though, go through what him and I were just talking about with your family? Like if you went, hey, nah, because <laughs> you went straight traditional, like you'd followed in line, which is whatever most yeah. people do. But obviously, like you think differently now. It was a much strong. It would be a much stronger feeling at a family gathering. That's for sure. Not like yeah. in a super like super negative way, but just well, your dad's an entrepreneur, so my dad didn't go to college. Yeah, he was, he had he a business to, for thirty years. He went to carpentry school. There you go. Was yeah. there ever a time where he was like, "Nah, I just don't, don't do it"? Like college? Yeah. He did, he was always just indifferent. He he kind of like played both sides. Well, he probably because, almost wanted yeah. it for you though too, because it didn't have it for him. Yeah, but like the. Way, or why I admire him so much is, is the route he took from, like, being a, 
like going in through like a uh, carpentry school and then he like he just went in the trenches and got a job at a garage work company for 15 plus years so Learn. you were 15 before he had his learned own. it damn mm. and then he got <laughs> hurt during the, during those 15 years and so instead of being like a guy that's like literally putting up the doors and fixing shit he was back on the back end doing the admin stuff so he sold the whole business mm. from all sides and then him and one guy branched off so that's how he learned the business and then i mean i'm kind of so you don't know i don't know because like looking at both sides of my family nobody was like i mean my like grandpa was kind of entrepreneurial but mm -hmm. on his side i don't know who he was looking at because he kind of just paved his own path that's fucking for sure, dope just super wet well and he was literally like a blue collar dude who was like ah oh, all right this is how this works well, like my grandpa was an electrician. His his dad was an electrician and was part of a union, that whole very, like, mm. Mm. you know, tight wound route or whatever. So one thing I keep thinking about back at Capitol was when I switched majors from small arms accounting uh, to leadership <laughs> and management. So good. Um, because, like, I had to switch advisors or whatever. And so the, the – and I actually liked my current advisor. He, he was, like – maybe he was, like, the head of the, the accounting area or whatever, but – he, dude, even he was like, he had the look of like almost like disappointment um, yeah. on his face. Where I'm like, what the fuck is this guy? Dude, like, I will I say, know you. accountants are like some of the most important people, but there's no way I could do that job. Yeah. No way, bro. Well, yeah, there was. A I am glad that I somehow like took the accounting class and I kind of understand what the fuck's going on, though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's important. I got too many stories of why, of why I understand <laughs> it. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that was pretty much it. I just. Yeah, if I were to do st do something different though, like I, we said on previous podcasts, I think taking the MP job when you for initially offered it is yeah. what I should have done. So what what was that delayed time? Like a year. Mm -hmm. So basically, you wouldn't have finished then. Correct. Uh, yeah. So I'd have snagged you as a junior. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because, I mean, going back to what you're just saying, the amount of practical. Yeah. experience and knowledge that you gain in such a short window of time when it's like actually concentrated versus like spending a whole fucking semester dragging shit out for yeah. what reason you know what i mean and you're kind of just dancing in all these different theories and stuff but most i mean obviously sometimes you're doing stuff but yeah you know you're not doing as much you're just talking about it well so. what chimdy said yesterday which was awesome shout out to the boom cast if you guys haven't yeah. listened to it check it out uh chimdy Chekwa said but this was an interesting perspective he understands and was interested in business and he's watching the business of Ohio State sell his likeness, literally watching his jersey walk mm -hmm. around campus and can't take part in the business. And that that was a really interesting like perspective to hear because now he's still trying to now he's like, you know, working in businesses that try to help the kids be able to do that. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineer tools for your family jewels. Manscaped re recently launched the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, the performance package. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off in free worldwide shipping with the code small arms with a Z S M A L L A R M Z manscaped.com. That's right. And you know, listen here, I got to tell you why I love manscaped. Tell so, me, you know, Cole. I think, uh, you know, all like myself personally, the listeners, you know, you've probably used a razor that, you know, might not have been that good. And you might nick yourself. And have an accident. I know I have. But listen, let me tell you, the Performance Package 4.0 is here, and it is game-changing. And, you know, inside this package, you'll find the lawn, the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, dog, dog, the weed, the weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, dog, dog. the crop preserver ball deodorant, dog. dog, the crop retriever toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies, dog. 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 And now, listen, I'm just going to say this might be the best ball trimmer I've ever used. Uh, Damn. Danny, what, what's your thoughts? You know what else sucks? What? Right? Whoa, whoa. Is, is when you're in the bathroom and, you know, you did your business and yeah. then there's a mess on the floor. Oh, right? it's the worst. So, yeah, th this this bad boy is waterproof. So oh, nice. Easy cleanup. Nice. Yeah, so, like, yeah, so Linda will have to like, clean it up after you, right? Facts. Yeah, right. Yeah. Trayvon? I'm personally a little sweaty down there. <laughs> <laughs> So Trace like, speed. Yeah, so this crop reviver here, this is going to save my life. Say goodbye yeah, to right. the duck butter. Because when, we, when we're working out at 4 a.m. in the morning, yes. it gets rough sometimes. Yeah. 
So it doesn't say back. anywhere on the uh, don't say list that it does, it's going to save your life. So that's good. Yeah, uh, I think that's, that's great. That's, great. <laughs> that's um, a great testimonial. <laughs> If yeah. you do Manscaped and you put in the code small arms at manscaped.com with a Z arms, Shout you're out. fucking, it might save your life. Yeah, that's right. You're going to get 20% off and free shipping. If you, if you use the code small arms, all caps with the Z, you like our listeners know, know how it works. Uh, yeah. Spell it out again. Here's a, uh, it's S M A L L A R M Z as in zaddy as in zaddy daddy. <laughs> and listen, Here's the deal. If y'all want us to get put on, go buy Manscaped today, and they're going to put us on. Yeah. That's yeah. it. No sweaty balls anymore. We know how bad that yeah. is. Yeah. That's right. All right. Let's, yeah, all right. Let's, let's go, go back to, to the show. Let's go to the show. And just like you even said, like when he was redshirted, they would have been having watch parties and shit. Yeah, dude. It's hilarious. Yeah. But it makes sense. And you could be 100%. doing signings. I mean, you could, do, you could literally be running yourself as a corp, bro. Yeah. I think uh, going to Ohio State in the business school, the one thing – I, if I could change it would be like, there needs to be like more immersion, like learning. Yeah. Like I like was, that word. Immersion. Yeah, like we need to like, cause my last semester, whenever we was actually working with businesses, we worked with like hot chicken takeover. Oh yeah. I remember that was like the that. most perfect shit. Everything that we were doing all made sense. And it was, it was practical cause they, then they were literally going to go take what we were giving them advice wise and go implement it. Like they That's were like, cool. they were trying to get, you know, us to basically figure out what the hell they should do. And that's real, like real if they would if cool. they would have done that with like accounting, basically how like now like Tyler's going through and trying to do all this stuff, like yeah. actually looking at the business and understanding that, yeah. that would have been huge. Finance, they basically the finance department was basically teeing you up to basically evaluate like a company, like corporate wise. Yeah, it wasn't so much help you with your own personal finance or anything like that. It was more of trying to just basically figure out should you buy or lease a car, but there's a calculator for that. It was all math. It was it sucked. It straight up sucked. But if we had actually looked at a company's financials yeah. and basically been like, should you buy this business? That would have been a completely different, yeah, whole yeah. different experience. For sure. So you just think there needs to be more practical app, which I mean, I'm yeah. sure is huge. 100%. That's like when Don even but, just brought the class here the other week, like just them walking through here and seeing, wait, oh, this is how this works? Oh, okay. Like... I just, you have to get and see things yeah. uh, to understand like what's possible. It, it almost felt as like, in I think this is true. They were just teeing you up to be like a corporate worker. They just wanted you to, the system get, is, they tedious. just wanted you to get a baseline and never actually fully understand how this shit, how you could actually use it. That's what, that's what it felt like. <laughs> But I was here. That's the master plan. I was, I was basically here going, I'm literally doing all this stuff like right now, basically. So yeah. it was like kind of matching like was, both worlds. It was the exact, yeah, exact experience at Nationwide. Yeah. Because I, in the interview, you had this folder. I had this folder. You open up the folder and on left Danny panel, with khakis and fo a folder. Okay. Just saying. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that meeting, dude. I'll never forget it. Yeah. So. Like yeah, walks in with a briefcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. would have been epic. That yeah. would have been epic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but on the inside panel right here at the bottom or whatever, it was like your projected career path or whatever. So they had it laid out for you. Like, this is what you're going to do. You yeah. know what I mean? And so, like, I want, I didn't want to be in this area of Nationwide, this, like, uh, department or whatever. I wanted to go to marketing. And yeah. I was basically told, like, I, I was basically told I couldn't do that until I worked there for a certain amount of time. For for no other reason other than that, and like basically Some made up rule. My manager wasn't gonna like help dude. me like or put me in contact with somebody. No, because that manager doesn't want to look like he's going outside the rules. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, my manager. I'm not obviously he's not listening to this, but yeah. he was like so by the book, like shirt tucked in kind of guy. Like yeah. you know, just whatever. So in a, in such a short amount of time, like I had. Uh, got connected with somebody. I had went to like the main daddy building downtown, um, and and like had lunch with the guy who yeah. ran the fucking uh, NFL marketing, and then Danny just made his own ways. And then I and then I had an interview for uh, it was like a social media director or uh, coordinator or some shit. Yeah. In the arena district, and it was like some chick who used to play lacrosse at Ohio State and like made an awesome connection with her and she mm. like, had a, I didn't end up getting the job but like because I wasn't qualified mm. but like it was just like yeah it's time to yeah. fucking make after uh, like the whole 
so like the recent like huge marketing campaigns with like Bud Light, obviously like in that chick, <laughs> that that just made me realize that like everyone who works their way up to get to that level is just really good at sending emails and basically probably really good at just following up with people because there's no way the skill was actually there. Bro. Like they can like they actually like are good. You know Listen, what I mean? Like I'm, the Campbell Soup guy. Come on, bro. Yeah. Yes. And and I've been around a gang of those people in the MP days because we would have firms that would come in. Have we told the story about the Campbell Soup guy? Well, yeah. Uh, shout, out, shout out Sid Rolock, who's definitely not listening to this. <laughs> but <laughs> Sid Rolock, who's actually came up with a great idea. He came. So I'll, I'll show him love on that. But when was that? Like in the 90s or something Campbell, or early yeah, 2000s? I mean, like his, he had like Donovan McNad's mom or whatever. Oh, yeah. That's like 2003. I was yeah. Like kindergarten. Uh, yeah. I was young, bro. So one of the smartest uh, marketing campaigns. One, you have Chunky Soup, which is not that healthy. Yeah. But you're like trying to get like that, you know, association with like family. So he had like Donovan's mom on. She was funny. And I think he's the one that started it but anyway. But it, it was a campaign that was wildly successful. It made Campbell's soup a shitload of money because I guarantee they got to be making that soup for like fucking 10 cents. 100%. Anyway. So but dude, this dude's been riding off this for fucking ever. Like his idea, which was a good idea. But then we hire him. Wasn't me. The whoever. Uh, hires corporate. them corporate fucking yes. MP, you know, big money dudes that end up in there. Hire this guy, and he wants to meet with me. He says, "I really want to sit down and understand your social media strategies." Great, Sid. Let's let's go over it. So we go over it, and I'm like, "Well, just jump on your Facebook real quick and check out the last like five or six posts." Like, well, I don't even have Facebook. <laughs> I'm like, "Well, you're supposed to be telling me what to do, bro." Like, come on, man, because you had one idea ten years ago. Get the fuck out of here. I also realized that my ideas I had 10 years ago don't work as good now. It doesn't work that way. So like, but that's what's happening is Mm -hmm. in those spots, you got people that had one or two ideas. They're not really entrepreneurs. They're really ass kissers that had one good idea that understand corporate structures. There is some super talented people. Don't get me wrong. But everyone I ran into was more like this guy and Sid Rolex as a person is a nice dude, but he didn't evolve. So I'm the, on the forefront of content marketing in the entire fitness industry. I, I feel pretty comfortable saying that. Mm-hmm. I was fucking really on the forefront of it. And this dude was like trying to give me advice. I'm like, go get fucked. Yeah. I mean, it ain't going to work. My, my impression of him when we were sitting there listening to him present or run that conference the or whatever, here, like he was like the classic like pyramid scheme. Like, yeah, it, it was, was so yeah. bad. The snake oil salesman. It was you know? so That's bad, dude. Like and I feel, I, I feel bad because he was – but in nice those guy. corporate structures, he probably crushes it because he plays all the games. Yeah. But my point is that we're so much more talented in this building as our group, which I think eventually will do things like that, where it's like we could say, you want us to come fix this whole thing? Every one of our skill sets, like 100 racks, bro, for a campaign. 100%. Or 200 racks. Yeah. Like I remember paying, I forget the fucking company, like something close to that for this big ass campaign. Like when we were doing stuff with cap and all that, like I remember it was like some shit like that. Looking back, it's like some shit that we could absolutely do. Probably and we will do. And probably point. make it in a day and make it in. <laughs> a day. Well, most of our ca- campaign ideas come up in like 30 minute conference. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there's people that have months of meetings to come up with half the idea we do on the fly. Dude. Uh, we think it's normal, but it's not whenever, my senior year, we had the the head brand strategist for Abercrombie come in. Okay. And this is just whenever they kind of rebranded their entire company to basically uh, like this stuff. Like yeah, yeah. super like for young professionals, 25 to 30. Yep. Want to live this bougie like made up like lifestyle yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And she broke, came in and they she presented what their deck was basically that the company just internally they spent, spent so much time probably right? like two years ah! she, she said that they spent like six months writing like a four sentence mission statement or whatever and she said that they were they were so having wack. meetings about which words they wanted to use like just no way some t- honestly there's just a point where the where the companies get so big that they're they just basically are killing themselves. It's like shooting yourself in the fucking leg every day. Yeah. You ain't getting nowhere. And they're bro. just like <laughs> trying to make up stuff to do. I probably. Yeah. Honestly. Oh yeah. You know just I mean? hoping people fast walk past your desk. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, I forget who it was somebody. I was listening to an interview the other day. Oh, it was the, um, the Uggs guy. 
he said that that was his problem. He would like when they got so big when he was still involved because he sold out for around like 15 million. But I think he was on for a while and they grew pretty big. He's like, yeah, I was so pumped to go to like the brand meetings for like the color schemes. I'd come in with like cranberry and like all the shit that's like, oh, let's give it a try. He's like, we come out and be gray. Yeah. Because we didn't want to like, cause you had to be safe. And he was like, yeah, I knew I was done. Cause there's no end of like, there's no innovation. There's no excitement. You know what I mean? Like you get to a point where you're just like doing it. So everyone likes it. And Which that, is, that's like being a band that like yeah. you were cool and now you're not cool anymore. Like I want to be the band that's like always cool. Which is shout out to my dude Iger talking about on probably on every podcast, but his big Sorry. thing is innovate or die. Yeah, he like I think why I like him the most because he kind of rose like the corporate like level. Yeah, but he always acted like entrepreneurial, and basically in his book he talks about he would he would basically be aggressive with like speaking up about ideas and stuff, and he talked about how there was a lot of people that would just automatically shut him down and know that. But then once he took over, he's like, nah, this this is how like, it is. I, he's like, I can basically see that we're dying. So I think that there is, so that's interesting because I think there is room and he's obviously showcased that at the highest level to be entrepreneurial in the, in the structure, yeah. but you're always going to face opposition and you almost have to be the yeah. CEO to really get it done or some type of heavy president of an area. Because if not, you're always going to be pressure yeah. cooked down. Even I felt that way. And I was the one to help start the fucking business. Yeah. You, it's my, one of my ideas. So what do you think the experience would be like? Like, would you recommend, let's say there's someone listening who obviously hasn't like, he listened, like they listen to all of our stuff mm -hmm. and they get a sense of like what this like entrepreneurial like edge we have is, but they're working a very corporate, like nationwide type thing. Would you think that the move going to like a startup like ish, like tech mm. company or something like that. Well, you think that would be like similar? Yeah, that's a great question. Like, and like, like imagine like, I just think of Shopify. Imagine going to work at a Shopify. What do you think that would be like? Well, I think Shopify is probably so big now. It's probably a bad example, but I would say like, uh, maybe like, maybe like the level that, uh, the business like Michaela works in. I love local. Yeah, yeah. Maybe something like that level where it's, you know, it's a local person, but it's still got a lot of employees, but it probably operates somewhere in between the two because yeah. our situation is so unique, but I would really look for the hungriest, youngest company that does kind of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a, my best advice. Okay. Who is if So if, if I was a brand new trainer, I just got out of Columbus state and I was in Columbus, I would be like, who is the, like who, where is it popping at? That's my vibe that I know I could learn. And then where do I got to go work the desk at? That's basically what I was trying to do. It was the same concept years ago. I thought it was at World Gym. But then I got there and there's a bunch of, it was fucking bullshit. So then it was like, all right. And then I got with Don. I'm like, where, where do I go from here? And it was private sector, Reggie Young. And he was like, oh, no, no, this guy's making like 100. He sells fitness well, good athlete. Perfect for you, G. I'm like, well, he didn't call me G, but he's perfect for you, Corey. I'm like, all right, perfect. So it's like. You got to find, even if you're not in that spot for very long, but I think that'll give you an idea of like, oh, is this for me? Because I, I, I'm telling you guys, I saw all these hot mommies coming in. I'm like 19. He's like working the room, five, six people at a time, hot mommies paying him, loving his, he's doing like Tybo shit too. Like he's killing it. <laughs> and I'm like, I can do this. And then I'm doing the math. Oh, yeah. I got this. I knew it. In, I knew it immediately. I was going to be my version of that guy just in my own way. So it made so much sense to me. But if I, if I go the world gym route, I might be having a polo with a trainer on the back, holding the clipboard. You know what I mean? So I, I really needed to see those guys. Cause I thought that's what it looked like. Mm -hmm. And then I saw what Reggie was doing and I was like, Ooh, that's me. And I was like, Oh, I can do this. And I'm, I, I know the things that he's missing. You know what I mean? So, I think that if I would have saw two things and they would have been presented to me that way, I ran into it because this one didn't work. But if I wrote down, like I could go see what Reggie's doing or I could see this, I would have ran that way anyway. So it's, I don't know. I think that's what I would recommend Cole. So like in, if there's a graphics person that's close by, dude, I would be bugging the fuck out of you, but they're not fun. Well, that that's what, that's what I'm saying. Dion, me. bro. Dion. That's what I'm saying, but you know, <laughs> workers out here, they're hard to find, you know? But that's my point. So it's like, that's why, uh, 
you know, that, that's what would be in my advice. If you're really about it, you'll figure out your way there. I mean, that's kind of mm-hmm. what I did with you. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what you did. So it really what all you guys yeah. did. Well, with the, yeah, the internship thing. Yeah, that. which was arm workout. Yeah. And now you're the fucking general of the arms army. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. Start from the bottom. Yeah. Start from the bottom. So, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, what else you got to add, Cole? There's well, some banger info, I bro. mean, yeah, we got, like, uh, a lot of life stuff. I mean, we kind of tying it back to the beginning, but uh, I got to announce uh, AG Senior Night. That was really Oh, cool. yeah, talk about that. That was uh, very cool. I think it's uh, – Were you nervous at all? Uh, I was kind of nervous, yeah. but yeah, like a know, butterfly, one butterfly. Yeah, I mean, but I was also like the MC of like the Veterans Day like uh, ceremony in like high school. So oh, okay, I, I, okay, I, had, dude, I didn't I, realize I had the spotlight on me. I was running all that shit. I didn't realize that oh, resume. Yeah. No, it, it was levels. Yeah, there's levels, <laughs> but uh, I just had the thought basically after doing that, I was like, wow, my voice would sound amazing if I was announcing the Buckeyes game. Yeah. Hey, maybe you and uh, uh, uh what the hell's the dude's name Who? Um, that announces the Buckeyes game? The not Joe Clapp, the other dude. Oh, uh, Gus Johnson. Gus Johnson. Gus yeah. Johnson. Cole Susack. Yeah. I uh, see. I'm thinking like the more of the in stadium. Oh, like, okay. Like I'm announcing the marching band coming out and shit like that. Like, uh, like first and down, you know, okay. stuff like that. All right. I think I'd be really good at that. Not like the play by play, like the hype man in the no. stadium. Yeah. All right. But I think I could do play by play at some time. I mean, sure. I would just have to study a little yeah, bit. Okay. You know, learn from the goats. Yeah. Uh, That's I mean, probably way harder. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But it was uh it was pretty cool. I I like my whole thing is like what I like doing things that I could think about 20 years from now and go, that was like really cool. I got to do that. Like I was a part of that, you know what I, I like mean? That. Like document it's life experience. Yeah. Like going into my great nephew's birthday parties and documenting. I like the fact that 20 years from now they'll look at the pictures and go, Oh, like uncle Cole took that. Like yeah. I was there to do great that. nephew. You know what I mean? At yeah. 20, I might, six. yeah, it, it's going to be awesome. Um, <laughs> That, but then also like AG, just the fact that like AG, Owen, all those guys trained yeah. here and like I was the one to like announce them. It's cool. It's cool. No. And uh, it's funny because Jared, who's, you know, uh, Cot's dad, he was up there last night and we were in the bottom of seven and one guy on and Cot was up. So, and he's due to just, just smash one. So I was thinking, man, if he could, if he goes walk off right now, his old man's going to get the call, yeah, bro. The call. And they fucking, they hit him. Uh, so, I mean, I, I wish he would have got out of the way a little bit faster because I, he's been so locked in. I was thinking if Drew goes walk off home run right now, this place would be lit on fire and the old man could make mm-hmm. the call on the microphone. It'd be so sick. <laughs> so he came down and I said, man, I said, I really wish Drew when he got hit. I was like, you could have made a Vin, Vin Scully call or something. He's like, oh yeah. He was like, I was thinking about that actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It, it, but being in, in, um, a part of things like that, which are small but they're, they're things you, small, re- they're but things you remember though yeah you will like things that ag that. will remember too like down way down the road you know what i mean yeah so it's yeah, cool that was cool um also i'm pretty pumped to like coach andon yeah i don't think we've talked about this no no, no but i'm uh, officially a uh licensed by the state of ohio too are you all the way fully legit yeah i'm just waiting on the, basically the state's got to give me back the paperwork but then it's all cleared but yeah i'll be i'll be coaching coach linebackers andon. baby yeah, it's gonna be dope so Dude. my 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 goal is to try to ride with Andon all the way up. That would be and honestly, sick. probably by the time Andon graduates, I'll probably be close to having kids. So then I'm just out. You'll be done. I'll be out. So you might be able to get your fill now. Yeah. And then as you're having kids, then when they come in, the, get, then you get can back coach again. It. Yep. That's a great. That's a great. And honestly, man, like what I noticed, obviously we got the training in the more in the morning, and you guys ain't young no more. You guys is grown ass dudes now. So it's like, mm-hmm. but. Getting that uh, the high school age group in here has been really fulfilling, and it's uh you know you you're gonna you're gonna just love working with the kids, bro. Especially yeah, the Hendon's got some dogs in his class too, yeah, so heard, you're gonna have fun. There's some yeah, great from athletes. From what I've heard, this team's like legit. They're super legit. Super legit. And when you mesh them together, it's gonna be and you got good other coaches. It'll it'll be fun to watch watch that on the sidelines. Yeah. Fucking Cole on the sidelines, amazing. <laughs> are you gonna so have good. some mustache or what are you gonna do? I'm definitely gonna yeah trim up to where the mustache is out. Yeah. Uh, I gotta order a pair of game day Jordans. I already got that figured out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, polo. I'm probably gonna size down. Oh, obviously. And I think I'm gonna be the coach that never wears a hoodie, no matter how cold it is. Yeah, you just always t- you like, gotta always, be that guy. Like always, <laughs> always in the polo. Just, just yeah, like the Northwestern. I'm dude. absolutely gonna take <laughs> dumbbells out. 
I'm ta- Schlegel was with him the other day. <laughs> yeah. They took a picture. It's amazing. I'm, I'm absolutely going to be like, uh, you know how like the Northwestern yes. strength, like strength coach basically is on I, the sidelines doing hitting a workout. I fucking love I'm going to make dude. sure that the kids see me working out before the game. Yes. Just so they know I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so good. Go do like floor press on the field. Like carry oh, a I'm, pair I'm of taking out dumbbells. Press. I'm going to have dumbbells on the yeah, sidelines. Like carry basically. a pair of hundreds on as the sidelines. As we're warming up. Trey, you ever think you'll coach track? Um, I know you like really ran- like. I know like you really, really like. like track. So like, really randomly, like a few weeks ago, like I had the idea, like maybe it'd be cool to like to coach track somewhere or something yeah. like that. I don't know why I just thought to ask you that, um, but other than Cole, but I yeah, like I've had like the idea, like maybe it would be cool. Um, yeah, it's because I was like talking to a friend actually, and we were like talking about just like running track and still yeah. and shit like that, like old uh, high school friend and. uh yeah, I think it'd be like kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I know you have a love for it. Obviously, yeah. you did it your whole life. Definitely not something I would like go out of my way to pursue. Yeah. But, but like, if it made sense. But if it made sense and an opportunity was there, though, I definitely think I I would I wouldn't pass it up right away for sure. I think seeing uh, and we all have all, all seen this with ourselves with lifting, right? You see those kids like get that PR, get that tackle, mm-hmm. or or implement something that you taught them. There's just something about that. There's, there's no va- There's no value of money that can be put on like when that shit happens. It's so yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. And it's something I've been on the internet for so long other than our own training and rooting for each other. Like I just didn't realize how these kids are just sponges, man, when they're, di- when they're actually like dialed in. And I can feel it on my kids that are starting to come back from their first year of college baseball. They're fucking pumped, dude. The one- Nemec was in here 7 a.m. on Saturday the other day. I walked in oh, yeah. and he's like, oh man, I'm excited to be back. And like, when you see stuff like that, this kid wasn't even lifting weights a year ago. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, it's exciting, man. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So I think there's a lot. How about you? Baseball probably as your kids, T-ball, any of that stuff, Danny? Oh yeah. I'm definitely doing that. Shit. Okay. Yeah. 100%. I'm so pumped. Yeah, yeah. My mom gave me a bunch of my old stuff, uh, like a few weeks ago and I, I, she kept everything, dude. Of course. So like, I literally, I pulled out my first T-ball jersey. Like so good. Number twelve, Atlanta Braves. So there it is, <laughs> dude. So I, yeah, I'm pretty excited to coach Evelyn and yeah, future baby and stuff like that. It's future cool. baby. I mean, we just went to uh, the Westville North uh, track meet mm-hmm. this past week or whatever, and the baseball team was playing right next to it or whatever, and that that made me think about it too. I was like, huh, what yeah. if? You know, yeah. I don't know. It's just the one big thing is the time. Obviously, it's, it's a lot. Of it's time. a lot to be like an actual assistant coach or whatever. It's just. It's just a lot of time. So. It is a lot of time. Yeah, that, that's one other weird weird thing is uh, AG or Andon's now lacrosse, so um, baseball is essentially over for me. That's really weird. So it yeah. happened like that. I thought I thought figured Andon would play all the way through. He loves lacrosse and he's good at it. Yeah, and he's just now learning it. And all the football homies play lacrosse. There's a lot of there's a crossover. Yeah, he wants to hit people, bro. He don't want to stand in the yeah. outfield. We know Sam <laughs> Hubbard, like Sam Hubbard, the defensive end for yep. the Bengals. Yeah, he the was cross. he was originally committed to I think Notre Dame for the cross, and mm. then he switched to Ohio State. I football. tried to explain the end and that there's a lot of opportunities in lacrosse. Hundred percent, like it's growing, but you know, for the type of athlete he is, that he could be really good at it. So. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. I'm learning more about the sport. It is fun to watch. And those lacrosse players, they got like swag too. They got like the hockey player swag. They oh, do. For sure. You're right. Like, it does that. have a similar vibe. You're right. Yeah. I know that uh, Madeline keeps saying she wants to go to the lacrosse game. So I think there's a lot of girls that go to the lacrosse game to watch the lacrosse players. Yeah. So maybe that's good for Andon too. I mean, if, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if my school offered lacrosse in high school, I did 100% would play. Well, because I didn't end up playing baseball throughout, and it's the same season. I probably would have tried it too. Hundred percent, dude. Hockey's the one I would have wished I played. Yeah, I suck at skating. See, yeah, I suck at skating, but, but I just love to go out there that. and yeah. hit people. Though. Yeah, but well, you, you got to be able to but, skate to them. But, first. but, but <laughs> you can do that. But, but, but you can do that with your feet. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I couldn't skate away. Yeah. I just be getting. Yeah, but it's like the ultimate sport because you're combining like literally fucking everything. For sure, yeah. from like conditioning. Hockey dudes power, are fucking tough. Too. But like lacrosse is kind of like that though. You get to lay people out. Basically, you're running a shit ton. Yeah, it's cool. I just want That's sport. the one thing that Andon was like, wow, we run a lot. Yeah. It's way different than football. It's more um, like soccer. Well, you're basically like a running back. Like, yeah. There's you no way I could play soccer. No way. No. Dude. That's the, honestly the one sport. I'm offside. It's the one sport I, I don't even know what kid, it is. Like, kind of stays away from. Yeah. 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 Soccer. The and only thing I'll tell you about wrestling. soccer that's nice, though, and lacrosse is it's got time limit games. I'd be oh, at these yeah. fucking baseball games, bro. Like yeah, those three are three hours. They don't have that timer yet. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Did that change everything? I, yeah, the, first the baseball game, timer. Yeah, was that was timer. the first time I've seen that at the Clippers game, and I'm like, damn, this 
Yeah, it moves. It fine. moves. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually going to Indians game on Saturday. Oh, yeah. That yeah. MLB games are a lot quicker. Too. Yeah, and I think it's more exciting. And they're way more high scoring because the pit, obviously the pitcher's arms are getting gassed. Like yeah, they're you're right. Huffing, like, so it's, That's part of it. I, yeah. I also think they need to just scoot in the fence. Just let them hit bombs. I mean, it's happening anyway. Like basically, yeah. They, like, but just, yeah. So, yeah, there's some. Yeah, guys hitting some fucking bombs, dude. Yeah. And dudes are gas, dude. Dudes are massive, bro. Yeah. It's different now. All right, I got to go to a call. So, I got to go. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Round two podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small arms. Danny at Trey. Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are out.